Second cast of the day. With a headache of a start here with the server problems. And Die Star brings up a most excellent point before I go into this, guys. This is a go for StarCraft Cup with an ESL IEM pro lineup. If you look at the brackets, there's Grubby, there's Dana, there's Die Star, there's Snoot, there was Josh. You believe it or not, he was taken out by Monty. There's a lot of other good players in here as well. You can type exclamation marks, or sorry, exclamation marks, singular bracket, or brackets in chat to take a look at the uh, the brackets for today. But without further ado, spawning in the lower right corner of the map. Playing for HyperX, no, just kidding, it's gonna be for Team Liquid, the Blue Zerg player, Liquid Snoot. And I'll talk a little bit about something he just said in a moment. Uh, up at the top left, though, from the Team Millennium, sport that majestic, that royal purple, it is Dice Star. Dice Star is, of course, probably one of the better Terran players. Probably not the best Terran player in Europe, but one of the better ones without any question. This is a map. You know what, we'll talk about mech bio and all this stuff later. Snoot actually here. This is something I really respect from him and a lot of other good players. Great practice. So, a lot of you guys see these tournament cups. You're like, oh, there's 75 euro on the line. These guys just want some easy money. You know, they're pro players. Of course, they're going to stomp out noobs for a couple of quick bucks. But I've talked to multiple players in the past, not just Snoot. I'm talking to a lot of others, combination Koreans and foreigners, who all have pretty much said, like, the biggest reason they compete in these weekly cups is, well, for some, it's free money. And they've said that outright. But for a lot of the time, people say this is like the best place to get practice. Nowhere on ladder are you going to find Snoot playing as hard as he will in a tournament. Die Star's not going to have that motivation if there's no money on the line. Like, it's it makes sense that players play a little bit harder and they give it a little bit better of a of a go in tournaments like this. There are some people who I do find it odd. Um, I'm not going to call it names here, but there are certain Protoss players I've talked to in recent days who specifically say they try to all in for a lot of these weekly cups because they don't want to reveal their builds in, in preparation of WCS, which makes sense, guys. I, although for me, on the other hand, it's like, why are you why are you playing in a competitive tournament if you're just going to try and foregate or blink all in everything? I don't know. Anyways, the point is, I like that people like Snoop get practice. I have a lot of respect for that. And it's why you see the scene changing so much. I mean, everyone's joking about the, you know this being the year of foreigners and all that, but it, it really is. People have been putting a lot more effort into the game, I think, here in 2014 than they have in any previous year. Whether WCS has helped inspire that, whether it's the crazy prize pools from events like IEM, I don't really care. We're getting a lot better quality play from a lot of players. And it's not even like Swarm Host LOL or Mech LOL like 9 times out of 10. We'll just see lots of good trading. Now, Dice starts hunting an Overlord, or was going to hunt an Overlord that typically hides out here, but uh, the Barracks is going to land and be part of the wall off now because there's nothing there to see. Snoot is just going to move the Overlords around the map for the time being to get some positioning for later. The, uh, you know, the other thing too, I, I kind of briefly touched on this and I wanted to kind of nerd about the respect I have for players like Dice Star and Snoot with that whole practice regime mentality is this is heavy rain! Well, Dice Star is a player who certainly can play mech, I haven't seen him pull off a lot of it. And with his third command center coming down and no gases, this is definitely leaning towards more of a bio build. And uh, I'll give him credit for it, he can handle his bio very well. Dice Star is a very talented player. He got to get a little bit of action in the Easter Team Story Cup last year when we got to cast him. And of course, you'll see him pop up with these odd cups from time to time. And yeah, with Barracks 2 and 3 coming down, it's certainly going to be bio. Now, he's getting a lot of early Marines, which I don't have any problem with. But delaying Stim for super long against a Zerg player, not the end of the world, but means he's not going to really be able to push. Not really going to be able to put on pressure. Dropships will be still very delayed because he has no factory still. I mean, this is a very, very, very defensive opening, in my opinion, because, you know, normally this is when the Terran player would start pumping out a couple Hellions. You move towards that starport, you get Banshees to go with this, and get some of that map control going, but oddly enough, Snoot, despite having these bonus queens, and I'm going to specifically call them that, bonus queens, uh, isn't spreading the craziest creep in the world just yet. Of course, using all that extra energy for Larva at the moment, just drilling in like crazy. 35 workers to 26, he's got that third base finishing up here in a moment's time as well. Looks like Marines are going to try and hunt that Overlord, but they will not get there in time. And I don't know what this is, but I love this terrain thing. This looks so cool. I'm sorry, just like, you know, ADD, ADD, ADD. Oops, sorry. Just going to jerk my mouse around the screen. I did get a new mouse, by the way, guys. So you'll notice there's less of the random, like, that goes on. But I will sometimes still just straight up jerk it to the side because I'm terrible and dumb. And I can't control my mouse properly. I gotta tell you, there are times when uh, I really, really miss having Pertube Observe. 
He's working on a bot in chat too. I guess this is what we're waiting this some more fun facts. We're trying to implement a point system bot. So if you guys remember like NASL had the bacon system. If you've been on some other streamers uh, streams too, you'll know about the point system. We're trying to implement something like that where you can then exchange your points for like raffle tickets or something, or maybe just the points straight up for like prizes of some sort, but we're trying to set it up so it'll be like, you know, the time you spend in chat will get you a couple points. So I'll encourage you to leave yourself here, like, if even if you're AFK. Maybe you're hanging out longer because you want to get extra points. I don't know. But we're working on something to that regard. And I love Fartoof so much for doing so. He's uh, been a little bit MIA from observing, but he's still still a big part of Ace Straight TV, guys. So don't worry. Just because uh, we don't have that dedicated observer 24-7 doesn't mean we're not still looking to make the stream a better place. But, all right, evolution chamber wall fully well and done. One one on the way. Die star, of course. I don't think Stu's actually got a whole lot of scouting information. I mean, the overlord from earlier lived, and no, he didn't even get to see the extra barracks. But the command center alone, a third CC in base so quickly, like that, kind of tells you it's going to be bio. I don't really know a lot of mech builds that involve getting super super fast third CCs. I guess if you're going to play really greedy and you like CC first, maybe then you build off the back of that. But Realistically, when you play mech, you end up putting on a little bit of pressure, you try to get some Hellions out, but neither has really happened so far this game. I do like that Snooze knocking down the Rock Towers. It's not that this will create an infinite wall off for the rest of the game or anything like that. Oh, Dice Stars 32. But it closes off a path in the middle of the map. It's the chance that, you know, Hellions might run by this later and catch your third base off guard, get some snipes here or there, but... Because this is such a passive game, Snoot is on 75 workers. He's coming up on his fourth base. And I gotta be honest, guys, I'm a little worried for Die Star. I don't know any Terran players who say, like, you know what? My best way to play TVZ is to let the Zerg player just sit back and spiral out of control. Because, quite frankly, that's what's happening right now. Not that Die Star's in a bad spot yet, by any means. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Sorry. Goes to Snoot Vision for a moment. But uh, the longer he waits, the easier it's going to be for Snoot to have like a hundred bailings. With four base economy, he'll be able to bully the heck out of Dice Star later on too. I mean, Dice Star's got a hell of a lot of rains and woo! But, you know, where are the medevacs? Only just now getting started. Where are the drops? Not available on the map and we got lots of extra production coming down, but upgrades still... He's got 1-1 one, one going for him. He's got that much going. Wall off over here will keep him safe from the circling run by. Looks like a marine wall actually scout that too. It does die. Over here on the left, Snoot's just keeping tabs on where Dice Star is. I mean, he knows Dice Star's on three bases. He doesn't want to let him take four. So that's just the posturing on the map at the moment. Now I'm a little shocked we don't see creep coming down just yet. I think he's moving the Overlord too, start dropping some creep. But vehicle weapons are on the way. Dice Star? Okay, that's Hellbats he's going for. Hold on, I was like, wait, why is he going for vehicle weapons? He didn't get any tanks out. You typically don't go for tanks in this matchup, so I'm going to be utilizing Hellions. I kind of talked about this in a previous cast, and I'll bring it up again now real quick because we do see Hellions being made. If you invest a lot into the Hellions, here's how this basically plays out. Typically, you see Bio Mine, and Mines are kind of like, I don't know, a gamble. Sometimes they'll get amazing, amazing hits off, and sometimes they'll just be absolute garbage. They'll hit units get almost no kills for it so they're kind of a gamble if you go for hellbats they're more of a guaranteed asset to have in the game where they will soak the baneling hits they will kill zerglings and while they as just like one of mines will eventually die the difference is you guarantee you get some baneling dead. you guarantee lings will fall to that blue flame and keep your marines alive a little bit longer so i kind of i gotta be honest i'm liking seeing people utilize hellbats more and more now it's still not the most popular thing to do and in my opinion probably not even the best thing to do but in certain scenarios, if you don't want to risk it, if you want to just guaranteedly get some damage done and not lose your entire army in one fell swoop, it makes a lot of sense. Now, unfortunately, the Mutalist out does have to be a little bit careful. Looks like these two drops can try and get away. Uh, Medivac's living is much more important than the Marines. It looks like he will just barely join up with the rest of the forces here. Boof him done in a second. And actually, that's a small little nuance thing on a Snoot, guys. It's worth noting. He did get the rocks low, but he didn't quite kill them. This was absolutely intentional and not at all forgetful. This is so that he can uh, either try and close off an army, use it like a force field, maybe keep him out at the last second, or just simply not let those rocks die early on as uh, part of that wall. But coming across the map like this, lots of Marines on the front line, does have to be a little bit careful. This creep straight out of Snoot is uh, pretty darn good here on the western half of the map, but here on the east we got Dysar, of course, cleaning up some freshly laid tumors. Blue Flame Hellbats have been revealed too, so Snoot now knows this is a thing. 
The Blue Flame Hellblasts are really good versus Lings, guys, but they're not the end-all be-all. As we see, if you can get a decent surround off of them, they will still take damage. Now the Bailing's gonna roll in, and the Mutalisks... Well, the Mutalisks are gonna have to clean up a lot of these Marines, but as we see, a lot of the Marines live. That's the... that's the power of the Hellbats soaking those hits. Fourth base has been gutted at this point. A uh, good 18 workers have died. Looks like they reinforcing Bailings, so will clean this up, and... Snoot, of course, with an almost double, no, now double army supply lead to that of Dysar, will push this back. Dysar is making about 10 Marines at a time, though. He doesn't quite have the economy to keep pumping Hellbath, but I kind of wish he did, because those are probably the greatest thing he possibly could have had in that last engagement. Again, the Hellbats themselves, they didn't kill a lot of Lings, but they got a lot of damage out. They didn't kill a lot of Banelings, but they soaked a lot of hits. Leaving the Marines alive is key when it comes to dealing with these Mutalisks. And if you go for Widow Mines, none of that is guaranteed. So again, he doesn't have the potential to do as much damage as, say, a Widow Mine does, but he's got the guarantee that the low end is much higher. Still clean up a lot of creep. Dice are definitely taking control of the western or sorry the eastern half of the map, but as I said before, Snoot's western creep is just getting it. He's he's almost got creep within the base of Dicer's uh, fourth. And of course for Dicer, he's got a limited how long you can play off three bases for. You can comfortably do this as a Terran player, but right around that 20 minute mark, if you don't have a fourth base at least on the way, you're probably gonna lose the game to attrition, if nothing else. At least if you're playing bio. If you're playing mech, that's a different story altogether, but we don't have a player playing mech today. So moving forward here on the front lines, Dicer. I don't know, there's a lot of banelings to deal with this once again. Six already on the map, but there's of course 24 finishing up here in a moment. Whoa! Another seven on the way. Sorry, I had a big yawn there. Ah. <laughs> it's stupid, no matter how hyped and excited you get. Even if, you, if you've had two hours of sleep, bottom line is you had two hours of sleep. But it's worth noting, three threes on the way here for Dice Star. It's not going to be a bit... Oh, sorry, it's not going to be available by the time this fight comes down by any means, but once that finishes up, he will have a very nice advantage over Snoot, who... Uh, he's investing in the air weapons and all this stuff, fantastic, but he's not going to be on 3-3 himself anytime soon. Some lings on the left side of the map to clean up the marines that were trying to clean up some creep, and actually look like Snoot, rather than defend, is going full offensive with this. Uh, this is quite a bit scary for Dice Star. he doesn't have a lot of home. These banelings are going to connect to these SCVs, and... Oh, this base is going to get gutted for sure. Monster kill! Oh my god, for Dysar, that forces his hand, he has to go for the fight now, he can't sit back, he knows that coming back home to defend is just a poor idea, a full retaliation is the only answer he really has, and in this best of one, both players, I gotta be honest, Snoot is not looking nearly as good as Dysar, he just used a lot of bailings in the other half of the map, he's recently brought all of them back home, does he have enough to hold off this fight? If he can get good Banley connects, then the Mutalists can clean up whatever's left. But the Mutalists alone cannot flock into this. Snoot only has 27. It's not like 35, it's not like 40. He cannot overwhelm the Bioforce with Mutalists alone. So we'll see if he can do this. Banley's are getting some good connects though on these Marines, and he is being chased back, but still a lot survives beneath this. And let's not forget, Snoot did have to give up a base while this was going on. But I think the Mutalists, since there's no medevacs to cover these, should be able to clean this up and should be able to hold this game. But that natural base is ransom for Snoot. Both players losing a ton of workers and dice are coming down the western half with another marine hit force. These drones are desperately mining, but unfortunately for them, there's nothing here to defend. No banelings. Zerglings simply will not cut it. Dice are now on 3-3. Three, three. Uh, he'll kill a lot of drones here. Uh, he might even kill all the drones here. I mean, the marines are going to get cleaned up. Mutalist coming in here to sweep this, but 50 workers dead. Still at 55, a pretty healthy count. Snoot on four bases, not out of this game by any means, but he took some pressure from Die Star, and Die Star kind of really showed us like the good, like the best defense is a great offense, and he really pushed Snoot back. We'll see if he's got enough to actually pull a defense now, though, is the problem, because this is a lot of Lings and Mutalists at his doorstep. 3 3 is on the way. Adrenal Glance is nearly finished. Snoot is on that Hive Tech, guys. But for the moment, 3 3 upgrades for our Terran player are probably the biggest asset he has going for them. There's no medevacs with this. Two just freshly popping out. Uh, ooh. Gotta turn around and stem. He's gotta get this army back home. He doesn't have the energy nor the medevac count to actually cover this whole army as it stems. But still gonna pick off some Mutalist Snoot. A little bit out of position with this. Ah, it's bleeding out a couple Mutalists, but nothing more is gonna soak some of those hits too. More Zerglings coming out means more Banelings will be coming out. 
And the resources lost right now too, not looking too bad for either player. Of course, Snoot is going to be a little bit behind due to the mechanics of the ban links, but still, that's the point of having more economy. You get to throw those units away, you get to be more abusive, and again, adapting this offensive strategy. Snoot going to come across the map, more SCVs are going to go down. I don't know if there's necessarily a lot left to go down, but still going to lose this whole base worth. He loses his base here in the lower left, but he's already transferred the drones away to the upper right, the newly formed hatchery that is on the way, but not done yet. Dystar will lose his third base, and this is his primary economy, so everything Dystar has across the map right now is pretty much everything he's going to have. Everything on the line for this one giant push. Can he do enough damage to end the game? This is going to take some intense splitting, but the Banelings find some very, very delicious Marines that are just clumped up and ready to take those hits. 17 more Banelings on the way, and Dystar is on his last limbs as his mineral patches are bleeding out. He doesn't have a lot of workers available, and unfortunately for Snoot, Unfortunately for him, Snoot is still on four bases. Now, it's not four bases of economy, mind you, but his income is double that of Dystar. New base formed up means lo no more long-distance mining and should should be able to extend his victory this game. Command Sergeant from the main has been brought over, kind of out of desperation, but out of necessity more so than that. Level 3 flyer upgrades are on the way. And uh, Snoot is sort of getting that scary point of mutilisk. He's almost at 30. 30 is kind of like the magic number where you start becoming unstoppable with harass, but of course a huge army of marines will drive back mutilists every single time. Yeah, Coming here, catching the reinforcements, uh, picking them off one at a time. I like this. Snoot could just turn around and go for the mineral lines, but uh, over here on the right side of the map, Dystar is going full bore for another attack. Snoot is going to have to come home or just gut this base raw. He can't ignore this. Realizing that this is the last base mining of, uh, of Dystar, he's going to take this out. If Snoot can hold with the Banelings, he may not even need the Mutilus. It's absolutely possible that he holds this with Banelings. Oh, but that's some nice Widowmine spread. Something Snoot's not had to deal with so far this game, but the Banelings still connecting to almost every single Marine. Dystar loses about a quarter of his forces. Still has a large amount behind this. Widowmines are uh, only one available. Now the Mutilus coming back home. This is looking pretty bad, guys. There's a lot of Banelings rolling in, but a good hit goes off. Can this finish the game? And it looks like Snoot is going to finish this out. Good game is called. Dystar will unfortunately go down. And Snoot will advance to the best of threes in the quarterfinals of the Gopher StarCraft Monday preview.